Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. Hopefully, you are enjoying your long weekend, your long Memorial Day weekend. <coughs> I am going to say I have been. <laughs> I've been spending time with family. I've been trying to tape. Uh, I had to go get my hair retwisted. Grocery shopping. Just a whole lot of nothing but a lot of things that we know we have to do on the daily and weekly basis. Okay, but I am coming back with Love and Marriage DC episode three season one no new friends okay or we could say no no new friends for ashley basically because it seems like well it's not seems like we know that um the samuel family has uh kicked off their african tour trip i guess they went to kenya i'm not really sure they played a few clips uh letting us know what was what and this that and the third and they were talking about, meaning uh, Chris and uh, Monique, were talking about, um, what do you call it, the dinner that they had presented for uh, everyone or their friends, I guess they should say, that's close to them. The little dinner party that they were having. I said, Carlos King, you a trip. <laughs> you a trip. So it seems like your major players are you just putting out there, almost uh, Monique and Chris. And when they're not there, you're showcasing the Silva family. And I can understand, because at first I was like a little indifferent with you about why we keep seeing Ashley loud ass mouth and her pompous ass and this, that, and the third. But. Arena is really kind, the Tyler family, meaning Arena and uh, Jamie Sr. <sighs> I can't stand Jamie since uh, uh, Jamie, what's his last name, y'all? Damn, Tyler. I can't stand Jamie Tyler because he's just too arrogant. And he seems like he don't want his wife. To, I'm, it's almost like his wife can be seen but not heard. Like, I'll tell you when you can speak just that and the third. I'm like, damn, him and Monique should have been married. That would have been a classic couple. And Irina and Chris should have been married. And I think she would have been loving on that brother for days, okay? And giving him his props. But we're just going to go on into it. We're going to take each couple at their best or what I really saw of the situation. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to start with the Quick family, well, Silver family, which is Ashley and um, Quick. Okay, Ashley tries to get in <coughs> Winter's ass for not finding out enough about Chris. You know, they're talking about the dinner and or they're showing us clips about the dinner that they had and what was going on and how Ashley was just being so overly aggressive with Winter. I'm like, damn, what is your problem with Winter? She ain't that bad, but golly, you just because she said she was a relationship expert or she was a relationship coach, just because she got in this situation where you felt she didn't get enough information on the person that she was marrying or had married, and then when things went south. She want to play the victim. And I'm like, girl, sit your ass down. You don't know too much about winter yet. Or they haven't given us enough information about winter. Or how she moves and grooves in them streets. And how she gets down. You know, uh, not say in her bedroom. But the men she attracts and why she attracts them. Hey, it could have just been a money push for winter. We don't know. Because like I said, they hadn't given us enough information to go on. So you need to hold your horses. Hold your mule, Ashley. Then we got Ashley going around the table. Before uh, playing a game, Monique wants uh, them to play, talking about a divorce and a scam. And she's pretty much saying that's what Kevin and uh, Winter was about. And she should have did her due diligence and found more out about it. And she should have been taking more accountability than just trying to blame everything on uh, Kevin. And then, of course, uh, Chris is just looking at, around at the table, which he, which he wouldn't say shit about Kevin and his comments and goings and how their little lunch date went. And I'm like, ah, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. 
if if Carlos, if you wasn't gonna show us enough of Kevin instead of just having a lunch with Chris to come back and fight his battles with the rest of the group, that was piss poor editing and piss poor representation of these two meaning winter and kevin because you only gave us a little synopsis of them talking and it seemed like they were just really in love with each other and enjoying each other sexually as well but now you got a storyline that we can't even compare and contrast to carlos you got to do better now babe you got to do better we need to see a little bit more of kevin and winter's interaction to make us get to a point where we could blame kevin or we could blame winter or we can blame both of them you know for their marriage going to stop it this is just ridiculous and actually she's just pulling punches and this that and the third and i'm like actually sit your ass down girl sit your ass down just because monique is not here to toe the road or, or be more extra now you taking over her place because she's not here ashley ashley okay um uh, then Ashley, you know, and, and she talks amongst, uh, well, I think they're in their confessionals. And Ashley and Quick make, you know, a few comments about the dinner and how they saw Winter. And Ashley was saying, hey, she kept talking so much, I just zoned out. And then, uh, of course, Quick is going to, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, concur or agree with his wife that, yeah, she was just doing a little bit too much talking and, you know, it's making everything boring and we just want to move on. And I'm like, quick, be your own man, nigga. Be your own man! Okay? Sorry about that. I meant to say ego. But he got on my nerves, too. I'm like, you don't have to agree with your wife if you really don't agree with with her. I mean, come on. Uh, But anyway, then we had actually said just, okay, they were playing a game about who was their crush back in I guess the 80s or 90s or whatnot. <coughs> and Ashley said her crush was uh, Jesse from Uncle Jesse from Full House. I don't remember his. I, I can't remember his. Uh, dog, I'm seeing his face, but I can't remember his real name instead of the name that they gave him, which was Jesse on Full House. But if y'all watch Full House, y'all know we're talking about the rock star, the one that loves his hair, comparing himself to kind of like Elvis. But y'all know who I'm talking about. Those who were watching the show back in the day and quick said his celebrity crush would be rihanna and of course you know everybody was like rihanna ain't gonna pay attention to you quick <laughs> i felt that she like short fellas because he's definitely rihanna would tower over him but it was just you know is what it is and then ashley and iran 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 uh start talking about um where they were meeting each other at a Botox clinic, or, or um, Ashley had invited Iran Irena there, and of course, you know uh, Ashley feels like if you got the money, you got the time, and you got the energy, do you when it comes to your body? You know, get as much plastic surgery as you feel you can stand, and you know, just make yourself feel good about you. And I'm like, what ha what happened to exercising and all of that, girl? Just like go go to the doctor and fix whatever you want to fix. You don't have to exercise. You don't have to do none of that. Just go let them nip, tuck, suck it out, fill it back up, you know, prime it and, and polish it up. And you don't, you know, you just go get maintenance every two years. I like, or every other year or every six months. That's her motto. I'm like, girl, Ashley is so vain. She is just, I don't know. She's just like a mean girl in a sense. If I can just put it or sort it up or shape it up to that um we call it um image where y'all can relate to what i'm saying she's just a mean 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 girl uh let me see then we got um ashley naming uh not ashley yeah ashley naming um uh herself a name called aggression aggressive ashley because pretty much winter was telling her she was too you know abrupt she was too uh, uh, we call it aggressive. She was just too, you know, harsh to her and how she would present herself or uh, wanting to know something about Winter in the situation. She just was doing a little bit too much that only a best, best friend could do. Not just somebody, y'all just getting to know each other. So that was uh, interesting. Then we had Quick um, meet um, the, ja the Jamie Senior, Jamie uh, Junior, and Jason. <laughs> at the gym and they sparring with one another just that and the third and uh jamie pretty much tells quick thank you for coming thank you for talking to both my sons you know one of my sons really look up to you thank you just everything and that's um jamie jr 
and he wants him to talk to him about uh his life his upcoming his upbringings and this that and the third and being in them streets and how it was a negative effect all the way around could you please instill that or tell my son that that's not the way he should be you know living his life so uh they had that little talk and you know it seems like uh jamie jr was kind of receiving the information that uh quick was trying to give him about staying away from certain avenues lanes and all that kind of stuff and focus on you know doing you and you have a supportive family don't make the same mistakes i made with you know following that quick cash because it's gonna lead you to the graveyard of the uh in jail just that alert i was like okay okay then he got his other son he want him to talk to which is the blind one and uh i I kind of felt quick on that one uh quick was also telling jamie he's starting this dj school to teach uh new and upcomer eager be beavers to basically if they want to be a dj and they want to be successful he's wanting them to enroll in his uh institution he's uh getting ready to open up and uh host classes and stuff and um uh, jamie was senior was saying him uh telling quick that his son that's blind want to actually become a dj he wants to go to school and, and learn how to mix you know and all that kind of stuff throw parties and you know be a very good dj and he would be a good mentor for him but quick peak game just like i did you trying to make these kids do stuff you know that you want them to do that you feel is successful in your eyes of what they should be doing and that's the only way you're gonna give them your love your support and your appreciation and your respect and quit with like well, damn you know in his confessionals he don't really want to make somebody or be training somebody and mentoring somebody that really don't want to do it they're just doing it for their dad and i felt uh quick on that i said that's right quit hey you should have told him told him don't 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 bring me your son if your son ain't really ready for the work you know because i'll be down down for him you know religiously if it, that's what he wants to do but if it's something you're trying to instill in him to do so you'll uh be favorable towards his career then that's cool but i'm like damn he don't want to, the man already uh disabled I'm not saying you know he should just be sitting getting a check at, at home every month and this that and third but if that's what he want to do then he should be able to do that because that is a disability but um i i don't know i because i'm very indifferent with at this time with jamie because i i don't think he's treating Irina right and i don't think he's treating his kids right i mean i understand the whole concept of not wanting your child to be in precarious types of situations where it's going to garner them to be in the graveyard or um the uh what you call in the court system as a jailmate i understand those too but i'm like can we just come to a meeting of the minds can we just let your kids decide what they want to do and you just support them you know what i'm saying i mean no we don't want to support illegal activities and and, and um discretions such as those no but can we talk about what else that you think you would want to do in this world while we're still on this world we still have the money to help you attain whatever you want to do that's professional you know what i'm saying like maybe owning his own builds business or something to that degree you know being an entrepreneur or, you know if you want to work for someone else what career choice would that be or what would that look like you know get, get coming to it from that kind of angle but you know james is just full of himself he getting oh he getting crabby and it's like he just getting on everybody nerves that's around him especially his sons and Irena. mostly Irena, because he, he he just doing a little bit too much and shit i i, I don't too much care for him but uh we're gonna move off of let me see well, we kind of slid on into the Tyler family, actually. <laughs> but how they come out, uh, when we talk about the Tyler family, they come out showing us that they want to exercise. Irina goes on and give us a whole spiel about she's, you know, very athletic. She used to train for marathons. She used to run the three, five, three or 5K sprint thing that they do out there. And, you know, she's good. And she's comparing herself to Jamie, which Jamie is not a runner. He just looks good uh, body-wise. You know, I mean, he go to the gym. He lifts weights, and he's trying to keep tone, but he's not a runner and, and all that kind of stuff. And Jamie said, yeah, but I got arthritis, so Jamie want to claim illnesses when it benefits him, not necessarily that he has them. Okay. Uh, then Arena goes in and starts talking about, um, you know, the dinner that they were privy of being a part of, and, of course, Jamie going to jump on her verbally and say well you know you shouldn't have been opening your own mouth in the first place they don't need to know about you know where we've been 
uh, uh, where we about to go <laughs> in my Jay Z voice. I'm a hustle, baby. <laughs> That's who I am. Okay, but anyway, uh, I, I just think he's just a rude individual, and I, I mean, she must really love this man, or she really love that dick. I, it's one or the other, okay? Because, uh, and she just want to be a fool for him. Everybody has played the fool, including myself, okay? A couple of times at that, but. You know, maybe she's just like, okay, this is the man I still want to be with. I'm going to go through the fire and the flames with him. And it just is what it is. You know, nobody, like, hell, you 50 some years old. I guess if you don't put it up put up with this mess for 30 some years, I guess you can continue on. Go on, baby girl. If, you know, as long as they ain't calling you no mental, mental distress. Because she still keeps saying that. Uh, and she even tells him, it's just, I haven't caught you. He said, because I'm that damn good. I'm like, what? So he, he basically telling you he don't cheated on you, baby, and you accepting of it. But since you haven't seen him, just people just brought stuff to you that's not the same. You just got to physically see it. But you, how how damaged you are in your brain about this man, Irano? Even if it was brought to you, show videotape and whatever, you still will let that man be in your life. Period. Point blank. Y'all be still living on the same roof. You'll just be throwing jabs at him verbally here and there, and then he will shut you down, make you feel bad about it, and it just is what it is. Okay. Then we got um. Let me see. Oh, uh, Irina goes in to talk to Jamie about you know how are your relationships going after uh, our dinner, our uh, anniversary dinner, as well as you know. Uh, other uh, avenues that you have definitely been a part of with the kids, you know, please update me what we are, what we at with that situation with you and uh, Jamie Jr. Okay, have y'all settled y'all in differences? Are y'all getting back on track? And you know, of course, Jamie's in his confessional saying, you know, my wife's like, wah 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 wah. She don't get it. it. Ain't none of her business. Whenever we get it together, we get it together. It ain't. You know, no parts of her trying to play in the middle and trying to play mediator. So again, we see um, Jamie Senior uh, arrogant attitude, his dislike for whatever his wife thinks a situation should go or how it should be handled, and oh, he just get on my nerve. I, then um, <laughs> while they were talking, little Jamie came up riding his um, big old SUV. I said, "Damn, that what y'all went about him? That big ass truck." But anyway, he, his dad was telling him go on and get in his workout clothes because of go and get his clothes because they got to go and stuff. So I'm guessing that was when they had went to the gym to spar with uh, Quicksilver and his boys. And, you know, it was just a hot mess. But anyway, it just is what it is. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it about the Tyler family. He's still uh, ruling his family with an iron fist. He wants every last one of them to toe the line. And uh, nobody's really happy with uh, his ass pretty much. And I'm like, okay, I can see why y'all feel indifferent but towards y'all dad. And I can see why Irina feels the way she feels like she's not being validated. And um, that's because she hadn't caught her husband cheating. She really knows he don't tip out on her probably several times. And, um, that, and I, oh yeah, I meant to say when Ashley was sitting there, um, having lunch with Winter and Irena, um, she made a, a, a statement because Winter was basically trying to be friends with her in a sense, trying to give her an olive branch, you know, let's just start over. And she don't know if she was going to be expecting the Ashley she had at dinner. Uh, the night Chris and uh, Monique invited them to a, a nice dinner setting and whatnot, and she didn't know if she was going to get that Ashley that night or if she was going to get somebody brand new but uh, how they sp spun it she got the one that was there being present at the dinner that Monique and um, Chris had thrown for them so it really was nothing then uh, and I really thought uh, Ashley and Irina had a friendship but after um her meeting with and having lunch with Winter and Winter's friend. I think her name was Tasha or whatever because they didn't really give her too much shine. But uh, she went up there and said that uh, she wanted to be friends. So were they friends? And then she made another question and posed it to Ashley and said, Well, you know, are you and um, what would you consider you and Irene? Are y'all friends or y'all what? And she said, uh, We're not friends. I'm like, What? Then you don't went invited her to Botox and y'all gonna be friends with each other like that or 
I guess you're talking about well we're 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 trying to be friends. Uh we're cordial towards each other. I like actually you just full of shit. Actually just full of shit. And I'm like, Hello Clean King, are you seeing them as the second family in your little um marriage love and marriage uh what do you call it? Uh show. Are you they're the second royal family? Compared to the first royal family, which is uh, Chris and Monique, so when we don't see Chris and Monique, we're gonna see the second royal family, which is the top. I mean, the uh, Silvers. That's what you telling us, Carlos? Cause she really thinks she's the queen of some show. And I'm like, honey, Monique must didn't tell her you can act up but don't show up, or well, you can show up, don't act up while she's away. Uh, because they really didn't give uh, Irena a shine to come over Ashley and be the staple person to see when she's not there, her and Chris. So, I so I guess they are the backup uh, royal family uh, when the Monique, when the Samuels are not a, uh, not at play. But uh, like I said, Irena was more like the uh, how we say the mediator, and she wanted them all to be not just cordial but be friends and be there for one another as them being women and be supportive and stuff and honey i'm like damn actually shit now winter and you rain at the same damn time because she thought that i'm pretty sure because hell i thought it was how they were portraying being friends at the botox clinic and stuff like that and you know giving more tea and but they really was just really being messy they were just talking about the dinner and how winter was presenting herself in her situation so that that was my bad my bad for thinking that they could have been friends because really she only sees her friend is monique you know that they have more in common and whatever but honey monique ain't gonna let you get too close to her either because she feel like she's queen bee and uh it just is what it is okay but uh let me see we go into we're gonna talk about winter and kevin well we ain't seen kevin i think carlos need to stop this bullshit he's trying to uh tell us about uh this couple which is monique not monique but um winter and kevin because we didn't get enough information we did not get enough information or a storyline on kevin to even have winter in the picture because i'm just like what why do we have winter here why do we have her here I mean, she doesn't have a husband we can compare and contrast to see where his comes and goings are because all of it's just that one setting where him and chris had a conversation and it still wasn't very clear because you know just like i was talking to one of my family members here on youtube we were like he looked like a crack monster he looked like a geek monster the boy looked like he was fainting okay so did he have trouble with the drugs did he have trouble with some type of substance abuse because he was just everywhere and nowhere at the same damn time when him and Chris were sitting down talking. I'm talking about Kevin. So, uh, yeah, it seemed like he was on some ooh weed that went bad and some heroin, cocaine, or, or what they call the white horse. Is that cocaine, y'all? But anyway, it seemed like he was on something. And it wasn't Tylenol, baby. It wasn't Tylenol. Uh, let me see. We have Winter, have her mom come over to her home. And Winter is telling us that her mom really did like Kevin and tried to get him the benefit of the doubt. He actually uh, called her mom to, I guess, ask for her a hand in marriage or something. You know, something like you're supposed to do with the dad. But evidently, uh, they didn't want to give us a storyline on uh, her mother's uh, husband, which was her dad at the time or whatever. Or maybe they weren't even married. And I can't, I can't, I can't call it. I can't call it. But uh, she talks to her mom about everything that had transpired between her and Kevin. And uh, evidently the house that they were living in, she had to get out of and move to some wood uh, digs. Where it was just her name on the lease or whatever they were doing. Maybe she was buying the property. I'm not really sure. Nice house. It really was a nice house. Um, and the mom is saying she feels so bad for giving her daughter uh, some bad advice on to go forward with this man to marry this man and uh have a, a family with him and stuff and it's just yeah, what it is you know and then she tells her mom about the firm calling her telling her that kevin was in the midst of some financial misconduct and they were going to be seeking litigation uh with him and she didn't really know how she felt in that uh, box or not, but it was just the whole point of Cheryl coming to her house 
uh, giving her this warrant and you know all of this that that's just embarrassing and um let me see that was pretty much it about her storyline other than I'm going to dinner uh, we're going to a lunch with um, Monique not Monique she was going to a dinner to meet Irena and Ashley and talk about the comings and goings of what had happened at the dinner uh, that Monique and Chris had thrown for them and how everything went left and why she felt Ashley was just being so aggressive to her for no reason and Ashley was trying to say yeah you had got on my goddamn nerves and I, I got tired of hearing your voice and oh it's just so much and you know i'd actually eventually apologize but it was like a piss poor apology you know it was half ass done you know about, i ain't gonna apologize no more than my last time apologize for the situation that you keep bringing up that we find no merit in that you need to keep talking about it because you need to take accountability for some of it if not all of it <laughs> i'm like damn okay you want to get on the girl no no nothing on this situation no reprieve no little you know, I see where you were going with this. Yes, you fucked up, but we love you anyway. You know, I know like, now y'all just need to be certain. Let me see what the food look like because I'm like, hey, Rainer, y'all just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And Tasha and the Rainer, hell, they should have started their own conversation and comments and going so that them two just keep hashing it out because really, Ashley had shit both of them down. Hell, all of them down because she's trying to figure out why Tasha was there. <laughs> What represents does she have to be here? And I'm like, damn. You know, the girl ain't saying that cold to you. And you just getting all on her. You getting on a rain. I'm talking about y'all ain't friends. Y'all more like acquaintances. <laughs> I, I, I take friendship serious. I'm like, damn. This girl is too much. And, of course, we know she was getting on uh, Winter's ass. So, child, it, was, it is what it is when it came to this particular uh, episode. It, it, I mean, one of them had to show up and act a fool. And since Monique wasn't there, I guess um, Ashley said, well, she'll take her space for this particular episode. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, really, really, really. So I guess next episode we'll kind of see um, Monique coming back. Uh, what do you call it? Um, can't think of the word right now. It just leaves me. Uh, but I get with brag. Okay, I guess I can use that. That's not having a better word to say. She's going to come back and brag about her comings and goings over in Africa and what they were uh, privy to see and the uh, different adventures they went on and all this, that, and the third. I'm like, girl, so I can just know that's going to be a dragon type situation, but hopefully we'll get to something else and pop it, you know, make it start popping for uh, episode four. Because I sure don't want to hear about her trips and her comings and goings about that damn Africa trip. All right. I really don't. I really don't. Because she's going to make it all about her and the situation. And Carlos King is going to, you know, be centered on that. Which we don't really want to be centered on that. Because I really want to see more Winter and Kevin's reaction. I want to see more of uh, uh, Irena trying to talk more. And Jamie listens without being condescending or sarcastic. Um, I want to see Ashley be a little bit more humble than what she's trying to pers uh, persuade us to believe what type of woman she is because she's just doing the most. She's just really doing the most and while she may be thinking Quick may not be having an affair, he probably has several affairs on her ass. And if it was brought to her doorstep, she would probably be fighting every allegation and, and, and be sitting up there trying to get on him about it as well. But uh, I, lesser Ashley, lesser Monique, and a little bit more of the other storylines coming into play. Uh, Carlos, that's what I want to see, honey. But it was okay. It was okay. You know, I'm liking it. I, 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 would, I would want to love it one day before this uh, season end, but it is what it is. It's, it's first. It's the first season, so we can expect some ups and downs and some we don't know why the hell he filmed this type of shit. But okay, I will see y'all next time for more Love and Marriage DC. We'll be looking at episode four the next time I see you guys, and we're we're talking and discussing over the comments and goings of that episode. But this episode was uh, episode three, no new friends. Okay, and Ashley was the star of this particular episode. We were privy to be a part of. All right, now I'll see y'all next time. Bye bye.